The first thing you do when you receive your Huddle View is read through the included manual. As you unbox your Huddle Cam HD Huddle View, you will find the camera, a power supply, an IR remote control, two AAA batteries, the user manual, a 10 foot USB 3.0 A to B cable, and a serial control cable used for joystick controllers. Now it's time to plug your camera into power with the included power supply. Let's put the included AAA batteries inside our remote control and take a look at the features. You can pan, tilt, and zoom your camera using the up, down, left, right arrow keys on your remote. You can also set a specific PTZ camera preset by clicking the preset button and then entering the number you want to set. You can try moving the camera and calling a preset quickly to test out the camera's movement operations. Note, in order to configure the camera, you will need to connect the camera to a live network feed from a network with a DHCP server. Once the camera is turned on and connected to the network, we can install the HuddleCam HD Huddle View control software. You can download the HuddleCam HD Huddle View control software from huddlecamhd.com slash resources. Note, this software is only available for Windows. Therefore, a Windows computer will be required for initial setup for this camera. Once the software is installed on your computer, make sure your computer is connected to the same network as the camera. The software should automatically recognize your Huddle View camera on the network. You can simply double click the camera in your camera list to start confirmation. You may want to connect your camera to a meeting room computer or in room display. You can connect the camera to a computer using the USB 3.0 output. You can connect the camera to any standard television using a DVI to HDMI cable, and you can connect the camera to an SDI monitor using a standard SDI cable. Note, the camera features auto resolution and frame rate conversion upon connecting to a video conference software via USB. The camera may auto power cycle in order to reset the camera resolution to match your connected source. Let's review the software interface and configure your huddle view. The main interface offers the ability to interact with the basic features of the camera not directly relating to auto tracking in addition to providing a live preview. Clicking the magnifying glass in the camera list section will show the available auto framing cameras on the network. Simple double click on an available camera to connect. Under lens control, standard controls are available for zoom, focus, iris, and iris reset. The presets section will set, call, and clear presets 0 to 255. Note, preset 1 is used as a reference for framing your subjects, and preset 0 is typically used for framing your stage slash podium. This is how you tell the camera how much space you want around your subject during the auto tracking mode. The PTZ controls section serves two functions. First, to provide manual pan and tilt controls. The other is to control the OSD using the menu button. You can start and stop the camera's auto tracking capabilities at any time using the start and stop buttons under tracking control. But before we turn on the auto tracking, let's set up some parameters that we will ensure seamless operation. Let's click on the settings button at the bottom right of this application to fine tune our system for our room. Tracking parameters will determine how the tracking system should behave in regards to tracking sensitivity, limits, and what to do when the subject is lost. Tracking sensitivity defines how much motion is needed to trigger the auto tracking feature. Zoom sensitivity and range allows you to define how much the camera is allowed to intelligently zoom to maintain framing and reference from preset one. The object lost action tells the camera to go to preset zero, preset one, or to stay when the lost timeout has been triggered. Startup action allows the camera to default to auto tracking when turned on or to wait for a user to click the start button under tracking control to turn on the tracking feature. When all settings are finalized, do not forget to click the save button. Clicking OK will exit the advanced perimeter section and return the live preview to the tracking camera feed only. Note, when working with multiple huddle view systems, you can ensure you are working on live settings for each camera by clicking the inquire button to query the connected camera for its current settings. You have now set up your huddle view and configured the auto tracking capabilities to work in your environment. 
Remember, if you have any questions during your setup process, that you can always call our support team using the phone number listed on our website. You can also submit a ticket at any time at help.huddlecamhd.com. Enjoy!